Hello Vinyl Community, this is Randy. Today I'm going to uh, follow up on a video that I just posted yesterday. I posted a video with January uh, Vinyl Finds and uh, then I got some records in the mail yesterday so I'm going to go ahead and show those today. I'm thinking about the name of my video, Vinyl Finds. I mean, I don't know if finds is really the best term because most of the stuff I'm you know, getting in the mail or else I'm going to a record store, you know, specifically with a record in mind to get, or I don't think I'm really finding these records. I'm acquiring them for the collection, but anyway, I did get some more in the mail uh, yesterday, so uh, I'm going to show those. I also have been um, exchanging some texts with uh, Brad at William Now and um, also Alex at Alex Spins Vinyl regarding uh, CDs, records, basically replacing CDs. I have you know, lots of CDs that I got back, you know, during the 90s and uh, early uh, 2000s when there really just weren't a lot of vinyl records available. I, you know, looking back on it now, I wish I'd been looking for, uh, you know, vintage re used records, but I, I didn't do that. It's too late now. So I have, you know, these old CDs. I have not replaced these on vinyl yet. I'm not really planning to. My my plan is to continue to listen to these and when I buy records to buy something that I don't have in any format so far. So there's actually cassette tapes that I have. Um, I'm just showing these. This is just a few uh, CDs that I have that I have not yet replaced. There's, you know, lots of others too. There are some that I have replaced. Kind of blue. I have gotten that on vinyl. Um, but, you know, the question is, do I, uh, can I tell such a great difference that I want to go back and rebuy something? And I, I don't think I can tell that much difference. I don't mind listening to CDs. They're, they're fine with me. I, I much prefer vinyl, and I do listen to records a lot more. Uh, but it's always going to be a dilemma. I guess everybody probably goes through the same questions. I remember back when I first started buying c CDs, I decided I don't want to buy anything that I have on record, on CD. And for the most part, I followed along with that. So... I, uh, so that's sort of the, the question. I, uh, I didn't get these records in the mail, so, uh, Kenny Burrell and John Coltrane. Uh, th this raises an, another question about buying these. I, I got this in the mail, and, uh, then I realized I already had this album. I have these John Coltrane CD box sets. These are the box sets of his... Um, prestige years. Uh, this one is unglued. Of his prestige years. So there's a set of interplay, which is him uh, on records with other people where the, neither one of them is necessarily the leader. Uh, there's him as side steps where another guy is another guy's record and he's you know playing sax for him on their record. And then there's uh, Fearless Leader. So these are his prestige albums. So you know, really, I have basically everything from uh, Coltrane on those prestige years. Um, I mean, this record is on there. So, now I've duplicated it. Well, I can tell you already, I just got it in the mail yesterday, but I'm going to listen to this a lot. These CDs I almost never listen to. So, it's always going to be a question. Uh, but, uh, like I said, I'm sure everybody deals with the same question. This is on New Jazz. I like that label. It's a Colored vinyl. Uh, you know, I like colored vinyl. I've been looking at these records I've been getting lately. They're almost all on colored vinyl. It, it looks like I uh, go out of my way to get colored vinyl, but I really don't particularly do that. I, you know, I suppose, you know, if I'm at a record store and there's a choice between black and colored vinyl, I'm, I'm probably going to get the colored vinyl. Well, as long as it sounds good, which <clears throat> so far these have. So, uh, I have never had this in any format before, so I'm very happy to get this. Herbie Hancock, Headhunters. I uh, want to listen to more um, Fender Rhodes electric piano, so this is a great starting point for that. So, happy about that so far. This is just a basic Columbia label. I wonder, is this called a Columbia 6i? I mean, it's got the I here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that a Columbia 6i? I mean, I, I don't think this is what people are referring to when they, when they say that. Anyway, this is a new pressing. It sounds 
really, really good. I think there's a music on vinyl, so it's not a gate folder, anything like that. It just shows the band Herbie Hancock from his, I think it was about what, 74 or so? Mm, I'm really not sure of the year on that one. Uh, <clears throat> Bags Groove. This was originally released as a 10 inch album, I guess, back in the 50s. It was actually uh, Sonny Rollins on sax, Horace Silver on piano with Percy Heath bass and Kenny Clark on drums with Miles. It was uh, released with four songs as a 10 inch record. Then they released it on uh, a 12 inch record later. And, uh, added another session that had, uh, instead of uh, Sonny Rollins and Horace Silver, it has Thelonious Monk on piano and Milt Jackson on vibes. Milt Jackson, bags. Uh, so this good, it sounds uh, really good. This one is on green vinyl. I, actually, I mean, let me take that back. It sounds pretty good, but there's a little bit of surface noise. All right. So that's my other thing. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm always buying these reissues because I... You know, I like having a record that sounds as clean as possible, and I, I know the uh, original uh, Blue Notes would be the best thing to have, but I, uh, I think those would probably be pretty expensive. But now I'm thinking maybe I should at least try to start looking at some of those. Uh, you know, see if I can uh, maybe find some of those. So I don't even know where to look or how to get started on that, but uh, that might be my goal for 2019. Is maybe to start looking, at, try to find some some of the old uh, original Blue Notes that might be out of my range. I um, Brad actually pointed out to me a, a thing that uh, Blue Note's going to start having an 80th anniversary issue series, so uh, uh, that sounds interesting, so I might like getting some of those. I think those are going to be some high-quality pressings. Uh, the fourth record that I got yesterday, Judas Priest, Sad Wings of Destiny. I, uh, this is a limited edition 180 gram vinyl. I... I don't like that. It's got this border around here. I would much rather have just the original album cover, but <clears throat> but this is what they gave me. So I uh, it is a gatefold has pictures of the band in there. <laughs> this is before they adopted, I think, all the metal, like the metal and leather. Uh, what I uh, I was going through some cassette tapes last uh, summer, and I came across the second Judas Priest live album on cassette take and I just wanted to see if, how it worked, if it did still work and uh, it sounded great so I started listening to a lot of Judas Priest. I've actually uh, replenished my Judas Priest collection for the most part so this is sort of the last one. This is maybe the best one. I uh, have been watching these videos lately of uh, Robert Z's Mount Rushmore contest. A uh, lot of good entries in there. It's all been very interesting. I haven't, I haven't seen all the videos yet. I haven't seen anybody mention Rob Halford yet. Which, uh, boy, he would be on my Mount Rushmore of a vocalist. Um, anyway, uh, so that's it for this. This is just four uh, records that I got here at the end of January to close out January for uh, additions to the collection. So uh, <clears throat> that's it. Have a great day.